Good morning and welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. My name is David O'Rourke and I will be the cantor at today's Mass. Our celebrant is our pastor, Father Bob Gorski. Our deacon is Deacon Mark Payer. The intention for today's Mass is Shirley Kinsella and Elizabeth Ann Cormier. The free community meal program would love to provide fruits and vegetables from your gardens to guests at our community meal. If you have an overabundance of fruits and vegetables and would like to donate them, there will be a collection box near the large parking lot door uh, next week. Next weekend, I'm sorry. Uh, this is a one-time donation for next weekend's meal. To preserve the sacredness of the Holy Mass, kindly silence your cell phones and any other electronic devices. Our entrance hymn is number 559 in the music issue, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, number 559. We'll sing all the verses. Please stand and take a moment to greet those around you as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Before we celebrate these sacred mysteries, let's take a few moments and call to mind our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us all to everlasting life. 
Glory to God in the highest on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, I prepare for those who love you good things which no eye can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, are all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant. Them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and, brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory <coughs> in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if by their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from death? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that, by the virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. Jesus said, she said, please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord.
Have you ever been a not holer? You're looking at me like, tell me what it is, and I'll let you know if I've been one. <laughs> the term goes way, way back to the very beginning of baseball in this country. Long before we have the wonderful ballparks like Fenway Park today, basically they were just fields. And so what the owners of the teams would do is they would put up board fences along the outfield so that people just couldn't watch the game without paying. Well, occasionally a board had, you got it, a knot hole. And so all the kids around would come in and they'd put their eye up through the knot hole to see what was going on with the game. And they became known as knot holers or outsiders. So, I'm going to ask again. Have you ever been a knot holer? Have you ever been, in other words, an outsider? Chances are, at some point in our life, we all experience being an outsider. Now, if you, as a kid, your parents moved from one town to another, and you ended up going to a brand new school, you feel like an outsider. All your friends are somewhere else. All the kids in that school have their own little groups or cliques or their own friends, and you come in and you feel out of place. You are an outsider. I had an experience uh, in my early years of seminary formation. I was at St. John's Seminary in Brighton, and it was my third year of college, and I had been told that third-year students had to go into a parish in the surrounding Boston area to do ministry there. For the most part, it was teaching CCD, which is what we called it back then. So I was assigned a parish in Roxbury, Massachusetts. So I ended up taking the tea and going to Roxbury and getting off the train, and I am in the middle of an entirely black neighborhood. And here I am, Lily White, walking through this black neighborhood, and I can feel all the eyes bearing down on me. This is the 1970s. Things were a bit tense in the 70s. And so they were probably wondering, what is this white boy doing in our neighborhood? And so I kept walking towards the church and got to the church, and the pastor welcomed me and said, you'll be teaching this particular class. And eventually the community got to know me and what I was doing and warmed up. But in the beginning, it was a little uncomfortable being an outsider. Being looked upon in that way or even being downright rejected doesn't make us feel good. And if you experience that, you know you don't like it. Now, in today's gospel, we have a Canaanite woman. She's a Gentile. She's not part of the Jewish community. And she's obviously heard stories about Jesus. And she has a daughter, the gospel tells us, who has been possessed by a demon, and she believes Jesus can do something about it. And so very bravely, she goes up to Jesus and yells at him, Jesus, son of David, Lord, have pity on me. And she goes and tells her story. And what is Jesus' reaction? He ignores her. Doesn't even acknowledge her. I mean, that's pretty bad. I mean, when you go to somebody and you're talking to them and they pretend you're not even there, you tend to get a little ticked off. And so this woman here, she's probably feeling it right now. You know, at least, Lord, acknowledge me. 
No reaction from Jesus. So she's not giving up. She keeps coming back more and more to the point where now she's annoying the disciples. And they say, Lord, let's just get rid of this woman. She's bothering us. And Jesus doesn't say a word. And then he engages her in a conversation. Once she comes back at him again, and he basically says, look, I don't take the food for children and throw it to the dogs. Now, that's quite an insult. But even that doesn't stop her. She comes right back at Jesus and said, well, Lord, even the dogs get scraps from the master's table. And Jesus' heart is moved. He's moved with pity for the story this woman has just told about her daughter, but mostly he's moved by her persistence. She's not given up. She's a mama bear taking care of her daughter, and she's not going to quit until she gets what she wants. And Jesus, because of this woman's tremendous faith, relents and gives her what she's looking for at that very moment, freeing her daughter from these demons. Can you think of any outsiders that we have today in our world at this moment? When I was preparing this gospel, the first thing that came to my mind when I was thinking about outsiders were those folks in our southern border who've come from Central America, maybe South America, looking to start a better life here in this country. And I was thinking about, in particular, the mothers who have brought their children thousands of miles to our border. Why? Why would they go through all that? There had to be something that push them into that, the violence at home, the drug cartels, no food, no employment, something is driving them, much like that Canaanite woman. What drove her was taking care of the, the welfare of her daughter. What drives these people is taking care of the welfare of their families. These moms are just as forceful providing the best care for their children. And they believe that will be here. And so they come to the border, and what do they see? <coughs> Barbed wire. Barriers. Armed National Guardsmen. Now, granted, we have to protect the borders. There's no question about that. But there's also human beings who need some assistance. And we've been having this battle for years, for decades, about how to handle the borders. And we need to come to some resolution because it's not just about a border, it's about people's lives. It's about their well-being. And what's happening here is people are coming up to the border and they're basically saying, and crying out as that Canaanite woman did, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Look at me. Not as an outsider. But look at me as a human being. A person who just wants to live a better life. That's what that Canaanite woman was pleading for Jesus. And as many times as she was rejected, she kept coming back, and the same thing is happening at the border. They keep coming back. Why? Because they know they can have a better life here. So, as we reflect upon what it means to be a not-holer, reflect upon what it means to be an outsider and know how it feels to be an outsider, Know that the outsiders coming to us just want to be one of us, to live like us, to live in freedom and security, to have a job, to support their families. And so they cry out to you and to me, Jesus, Son of David, 
have pity on me. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in a pontius pilot. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who are the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We bring our prayers to a loving God who extends mercy to all peoples and every race. that the faith and joy of believers attract unbelievers into God's loving arms. We pray to the Lord that people of every race and culture seek to understand those who are different from themselves. We pray to the Lord Lord, that those on the verge of giving up find strength to persevere. We pray to the Lord Lord, that those who form this community of faith Root out prejudice and welcome every stranger. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are troubled in the discernment of their vocations, that they will be blessed by the Holy Spirit with encouragement, insight, and the grace of perseverance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all petitions brought to our shrine seeking the intercession of St. Jude. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the sick especially those whose names are listed in our parish bulletin, that God will heal them and restore them to good health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for what else shall we pray? For these intentions, and also for Shirley Kinsella and Elizabeth Ann Cormier, who are the intentions for this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. It's also keeping our prayers the people on Maui and also on the West Coast. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. hear our prayer. God of Israel, in your mercy, you spared your people. Increase our faith in you and hear what we ask through Christ our Lord. Our presentation hymn is number 510 in the music issue, Age to Age, number 510. Please join in on the refrain.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <coughs> sacrifice to your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ, O Lord. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. <laughs> Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. We know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself. The cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ, who is our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. <clears throat> Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together mm -hmm. with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 525, Jesus, You Are the Healing, number 525 in the music issue. Oh 
Our hymn of praise is number 682, How Lovely Your Dwelling Place. Number 682, please join in the refrain. Good morning. My name is Trish Woodward. Have you ever been asked to go to a movie with a friend and were hesitant, but then with a little encouragement decided to go? Or maybe you were asked to play a game or participate in a sport activity, and even though you were not quite sure what the outcome would be, opted to do it? Most of the time, we're glad we took part and we're almost always glad someone thought to ask us. Have you ever been the friend or spouse or partner or neighbor or coworker who extended the invitation? That can sometimes be a bit stressful, but whatever the response to our invite is, we are usually glad we at least tried. That is what we are requesting that you do today. We're asking you to invite anyone who comes to mind who you think might be interested in learning more about Jesus and the Catholic Church to a night of inquiry here at St. Jude's on Sunday, September 10th at 6 p.m. It would be great if you could come with them. This session is for informational purposes only and does not commit one to anything. Father Bob and the members of the RCIA team will be there to provide de basic details about the process and answer any questions you may have. There are copies of Father Bob's email regarding the night of inquiry in the back of the church if you did not receive one. 
So put on your thinking caps and prayerfully think of who you might ask. Next week, we will share a little about what RCIA is and what it is not. Thank you and have a blessed week. Thank you, Trish. Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be co-heirs in heaven who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The mighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth and glorify your God by your life. Your thanks be to God. Our hymn of sending forth is number 612 in the music issue. Thanks be to God, number 612. to God.